Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm a new Catherasin. I'm a fertility physician and doctor mom. And today we'll be talking about saline infused sonohistograms. So we usually recommend them in patients with abnormal uterine bleeding. We may be suspicious for a polyp or fibroid in those situations. In patients with infertility, if we're suspicious for polyp, fibroids, adhesions, these type of things. And in patients with recurrent pregnancy loss, in those situations, we wanna make sure there's no uterine cavity malformation, no septums, and so we often and recommend it in those patients also. Sometimes we'll do a baseline ultrasound and see something suspicious for a polyp or a fibroid that may be impacting the cavity and we may recommend it in those situations also. Or uh, patients that do in vitro fertilization is actually part of that process as well. We wanna make sure the uterine cavity is perfect before we put an embryo back in. And so it's built into that process also. So now we'll talk a little bit more about how the process works, when we do it and what to expect afterwards. Okay, let's go through when we do the procedure. So if a patient is having normal cycles, we aim for after they stop bleeding, but before they ovulate. So that time window, which is generally speaking around cycle day seven to 12. The reason why is we don't want any bleeding typically during the procedure. This can cause artifact and make it harder to interpret the study. And we don't wanna do it after ovulation because we just don't wanna interfere with a theoretical pregnancy. Now, in patients where they are already on birth control, for example, patients doing in vitro fertilization, they will often do birth control as kind of the lead in into the stimulation. And so we'll often do the saline ultrasound while the patient's on birth control. And we can do that anytime. The fact that they're on birth control suppresses their cycle, so they should not ovulate. So we have the flexibility to do it anytime in that circumstance. Now, to take you through how the procedure works. So the overall idea here is we're trying to evaluate the uterine cavity by injecting sterile water or saline into the uterus. This will dilate the cavity and allow us to evaluate the inside contour of the uterus better that way. Now, to kind of take you through step by step, First, we'll put a speculum in, then we will cleanse the cervix with a cleaning solution called betadine. Then we will advance a catheter into the cervix and into the uterus. Once it is in place, we will then remove the speculum, leaving the catheter in place. Then we will attach sterile water or saline to the catheter. Once that's done, then we'll bring in the transvaginal ultrasound probe and introduce that into the vagina. Once that's in place, we will start to inject the sterile water or saline into the uterus. This will dilate the cavity and we'll perform an ultrasound to look at the inside contour of the uterus that way. So that's pretty much how the procedure goes. So this is what a normal uterine cavity looks like. If a patient has a polyp, this may be what it looks like. If a patient has a fibroid that's impacting the cavity, this is what that can look like. Sometimes we'll see adhesions. Um, sometimes we'll see a septum. So in the septum, the transverse view is actually helpful. So sometimes what we wanna see on the transverse view is a nice oval appearance. So if a septum is there, then we will often see an owl eye appearance. So that's essentially the septum kind of dividing the cavity into um, two cavities at the top part of the uterus. So that can be suspicious for a septum. Sometimes we'll do a 3D ultrasound as part of the saline ultrasound. So the 3D will give, give us a nice overall view of the uterine cavity cavity after the procedure. Once the procedure is done, we'll remove all the instruments. I'll go over the findings of the um, study with the patient, and then we'll go over typical things to expect. So it's normal to have a little cramping during this procedure, so it's okay to take some Motrin 30 minutes before the procedure, but generally speaking, it's a pretty well-tolerated um, test. Other things to expect are going to be spotting, sometimes a little vaginal discharge, and basically some fluid leaking out. So that's going to be normal since the, the fluid was in the uterus that it will leak out. So we'll often have the patients um, put a pad in place to help with that after the procedure. Risks of the procedure, so there is a very small risk of infection, less than 1% risk. Some clinics will go ahead and give patients antibiotics just as an extra precaution. But overall, it's a well-tolerated study with very little risk to it and very low risk for infection. So that is the saline infused on a histogram. If you guys have questions, please leave them for me in the comments below. If you like this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe down below. Thank you guys again so much for watching and see you in the next video.